Hey guys and gals, I want to show you what I'm doing today, um, working on some tomato steaks. This is a comparison of cages. Uh, the one on the left is a little 39 inch hog wire that I've used for the last uh, two years. The one on the right is a regular uh, CRW, concrete reinforcing wire, that I bought two rows of and I'm making cages for this year. Now, I need some steaks to, to be able to hold them up. You can't just, you know, stand them up. Some people cut the bottom uh, bottom piece of wire off and make a little prong and, you know, stick that down in the ground. But if you get a big tomato and a nice wind, it's going to roll that thing right over. So what I have been doing is on the small one, I put tobacco sticks on there and a little uh, strap, nylon strap, or zip tie, whatever you want to call it. And that worked out very good. But for the big uh, cages, that little tobacco stick right there is just not going to cut it. So I gotta have something a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger to hold that big cage up. And just looking at that, you gotta be pretty optimistic or uh, confident in what you're growing to take a cage like that and put it around a uh, you know 10 or 12 inch tomato plant to anticipate or expect uh, the plant to grow all the way up in there. So I've never never used these big ones before, so we're gonna try it. But uh, let me show you how I cut all these uh, tomato steaks. Alright, so I start out with this right here. What is uh, some scrap oak lumber, uh, white oak. A buddy up the road, he's got a little, uh, does a little tree service, makes mulch and things like that. And he's got a huge pile, a couple of huge piles out there of this uh, scrap, scrap lumber that he's got. So what I'm going to do is just take these things and rip them down and make tomato steaks out of them. Instead of spending uh, $2 a piece or whatever it is at the store, I'm going to just make my own. Alright, so what I do, since I'm doing this by myself, is just take this board, lay it up here, put me a center block on one end. That's my other hands right there. Take the skill saw. I've already got my little fence set up on it. It's about an inch and a half, something like that. That's plenty big. Lock again, drop your saw in the groove. And there you have a real nice uh, seven foot plus tomato steak. That thing right there will hold up a cage, no problem. And you do that enough times, and you end up with a bunch of them like this right here. That's 30 something. I still got a bunch more to cut. So I'll cut them off to length after I get them rough cut so I know what I'm working with. And the little scrap pieces right here, what I do is uh, take the miter saw and set it up and just cut all these up in the little strips and use them for kindling next year. Alright, this is what you end up with. We got about 75 plus or minus really nice tomato steaks out of all that uh, all that wood I had laying there. Really, some of them pretty good sized ones too. Look a lot like some of that stuff that uh, Misty was using when she staked up her tomatoes. And the little uh, scrap stuff I had, chopped that up. Got me a nice little uh, tub of kindling. I'll put this inside somewhere. It'll be dried out real good by next winter. And so since we're looking at wood, uh, we'll take a look at the wood pile real quick. I think I just about got enough wood for next year, next fall. Got all kinds of wood out here, all different varieties. Red oak, white oak, hickory, got some poplar, sweet gum, maple, even got a black cherry. Some of that still piled up on the end down there. But I think that should be enough wood for next winter, especially if I decide to take uh, January and February off semi and plant just cold crops. That'll keep me from having to use so much heat at night. All I gotta do is just maintain something in the mid 30s, something like that, and they'll be fine. But so we went from the tomato steaks to the wood, 
to the wood pile. So now we're going to go look at another pile. And that's right down here. From one pile to another. Funny how things just kind of roll along sometimes. And this is the equivalent of about 11 truckloads of horse manure. I loaded up seven and brought them over here and uh, unloaded them with the pitchfork and then the guy that I got it from, he brought me a dump bed, a 12 foot dump trailer, which was the equivalent of about four more truckloads. So that's what I'm going to be using to make my compost. I got to take it, turn it over, take tobacco and just turn it over every you know, few weeks, something like that, see if I can get it composted real good by this fall so I'll have something else to work with to get my stuff going in the greenhouse again. Alright, I don't say a whole lot about politics, not a whole lot anyway, uh, as far as my personal views of it. Um, I think you can kind of guess where I stand. I don't like what's going on. That's why I'm trying to figure out how to grow as much as I can for as many people as I can because we're all going to need it. But looking at this big old pile of horse manure right here, this pretty much sums up my uh, personal opinion of the people we have in Congress right now president included everybody up there this one the one before him and the one before him all of them just a great big old pile of horse manure the only bad thing about it though if you tried to compost them and put them on a the garden you probably kill everything in there